Hello, this presentation is by PickaWeb and today we're looking at how to switch your website to HTTPS. My name's Tony Messer, I'll be your host and I'm one of the founders of PickaWeb.co.uk. We offer a full range of domain and hosting services and our sister company is MaximaLocal.co.uk and we help businesses with their web design, web marketing and social media. So if you need any help on any of these areas, we'd love to hear from you, just reach out to us. So, first point, what is HTTPS? Well, HTTP that you may be more familiar with, this stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. If you look up at your browser when, you, when you're um, going around the internet, you'll see that. And basically, that's just jargon. And what it really means when we translate it back into English is this is how your PC or how your device connects to a website, to the actual web server. So, HTTPS is the secure form of HTTPS. TTP, where the S stands for secure, and you, you'll probably recognize this, be more familiar with the padlock area or maybe the green bar that you'll see when you're browsing around. Now, HTTP traffic can be intercepted by hackers or whoever, whereas the way that HTTPS works is it creates an encrypted, impregnable link between your device and the actual website itself, so that that's in, any information that passes to or from them, the, those machines can't be intercepted and in order to set it up you'll need an SSL certificate. So in terms of switching the, the um, HTTPS it used to be used uh, mainly for online payments and other sensitive data like login areas but increasingly it's used for a whole website it's not just for payment pages and this has been accelerated in the last few years especially since 2014 when Google stated that HTTPS is actually one of their ranking factors and that what that means is when it looks at a website to determine where to put it in its rankings that's one of the things that it's going to check. They've said that it isn't a very heavily weighted factor but it is still a factor and every little um, every little point helps you and I guess the, the main thing to consider is this is the direction of traffic and it's it really is it's a question of when not if you switch and the sooner that you do the sooner you're going to get an advantage over less savvy competitors now when you buy an SSL certificate there's several types that you can um, that you can purchase and and they all they pretty much they offer the same security but what they what they where they differ is they have different features so let's just quickly run through some of the most popular ones there's a domain SSL, this is cheap, um, they get issued very quickly, pretty much instantly, and all they need is for the domain verification. They just need to verify that you're the domain owner, that's how they can um, issue them so quickly, it's done by email. Then there's a wildcard SSL, which is effectively the same as a domain SSL, however, you can use that on the domain's subdomains as well. Then we move up to the organization SSL, and with this, this requires some kind of company verification, um, some basic information to make sure that the company is legally registered. That takes one to two business days to issue. And then finally, there's the extended validation or EV SSL. Uh, and this has a green browser bar. They're more expensive. They do require more verification. In this case, it's legal, physical and organizational verification. And they take three to four business days to issue. So that's really the uh, summary of the main types of SSL certificate. But if you're just starting out and you just want to switch, just go for a domain SSL. It, it, it offers the same level of security. A quick point before we jump in and go through the steps. If you're not comfortable, you know, looking under the bonnet and thinking, oh goodness me, I'm going to, you know, do something. I'm going to completely break my website. I would probably I would strongly recommend that you do hire a developer now that didn't that doesn't have to be as intimidating as it sounds I mean if you have a recommendation if you know somebody who's got another website and they can point you in the direction of someone then that's great but if not you can hire freelance developers there's loads of websites like Upwork or Guru um, where you can find developers and what you should do is once you've found a few people they get they do get uh, graded and they do get um, their previous customers putting comments on there but just to satisfy yourself what I would recommend is um, testing them yourselves and if you go to a website for example like test testsforgeeks.com they are a paid service but it will save you a lot of um, hassle and enable you to make an informed decision you basically give them an online test it's timed 
and you just want to hire the A graders. I've used this myself and it's amazing. People will tell you they can do absolutely everything. You give them a test and they get a D. You want to make sure that you, you only hire the kind of A graders, the ones that are getting 80, 90%, okay? Another thing to consider is to make sure that they're available on Skype. You wanna be able to chat to them, uh, call them uh, or whatever. And you want pretty quick uh, communication. But th what we'll look at now is that these different steps, this will help you to understand what's involved so that you can make sure that they're doing exactly what they need to be doing, okay? And you can give them a list of tasks that you want to do up front. So step one, you need to purchase and install your SSL certificate. Usually you can purchase your certificate from your hosting company such as PickaWeb. Um, and then let's say we're doing a domain SSL, there'll be a, an email that you need to approve. It'll go to say Webmaster or it's, a, it's one of a number of specified emails. Your hosting company will help you on that um, side of things. Then the SSL code is, is created and issued to you and it needs to be installed on the server. So uh, ask your host for, um, for help on that front or if you're using a developer, get them to do all of that for you. But it's pretty straightforward stuff. Then before you actually start making any changes, I would recommend that you take a full backup of your website files. This is really, it's the belt and braces approach. And if you use something like cPanel, if your hosting company offers that, then there's a feature where you can do that. But again, just ask your hosting company or your developer if you're not sure about that. Then the next step is you need to go into your website, you need to configure the hard links. And what we mean here is you're gonna be linking, let's say on your menu, on your navigation, or internally you're linking to other pages. And at the moment there'll be HTTP, HTTP. So you need to change them to HTTPS, that's best practice. Um, and if you're doing it on a small website, say less than 20 pages, somebody can do this pretty quickly. They can just run through and manually make those changes for you. If you've got a, a larger website, particularly if, if it's a WordPress one, you can automate this. And there's a couple of um, scripts or plugins there. The first one there is Velvet Blues Update URLs plugin for WordPress. And then there's the Interconnect It uh, Search Replace script. So it can be automated. I mean, some websites, they go into hundreds, maybe even thousands of pages. Manually, that would take ages. So if you can, if you do need to do that, look to automate that as much as possible. But do make sure you've got a backup of your files before you make any of these changes. Okay, step four, then you need to update any external links that you control. Now, if you've been doing backlinking or link building for some time, then you'll be aware, obviously it's difficult to control external links that link to you. So any that you do control, these will be things like social media accounts, directory listings, or maybe you've got other websites that you control. Any, any that are pointing to you at the moment, they'll be pointing to HTTP, so HTTP, so you need to make sure that you change them to HTTPS, okay? Now don't get too stressed about this if you can't um, make all of those changes because we're going to be setting up a redirect, which brings us to step five. And this is to set up a 301 redirect. And what this means, well, this is the type of thing you really need to get your um, developer to help you with. Uh, this is not, you know, not something I've put on here. Don't try this at home, folks. Um, a 301 redirect basically is a permanent redirect and what you're telling uh, anyone who goes to the HTTP page is re redirect any HTTP traffic to the HTTPS equivalent. So it's just going to redirect it permanently for you. It's telling the internet that page has now changed to HTTPS. So as I say, get a developer if necessary and they'll make a change if you're using a Linux host, for example, like um, a lot of people will do then that's done through your HT access file. Once you've done it, you can do a double check with an SSL scanning tool. There's one here, I have a couple here that I've listed. Uh, there's Qualys SSL Lab, and then for WordPress, there's the WordPress SSL Insecure Content Fixer. So once you've done that, I've got an optional step in here, and that's to update your CDN SSL. Now CDN stands for Content Delivery Network, uh, and, and that's a presentation in its own right, but Basically, the way that it works is it's a geographically dispersed set of servers which store copies of your website files on them. And the idea is that this it will present the uh, the files very quickly to local users. This is more for large e-commerce websites where maybe have customers across the globe, so that they get their content much more quickly. And as well as well as the performance side of things, it also improves security because it picks up things like malicious traffic patterns. Uh, a very well-known one is Cloudflare, Cloudflare. And again, check with your hosting company. 
Um, and if you are using a CDN, then what you'll need to do is just contact them and ask them to up, um, for instructions on how to um, update it so that the, it recognizes your new SSL certificate and the fact that you've switched to HTTPS. But as I say, most most websites, they won't be on a CDN, but I've put in there, I put it uh, in there as an optional step for completeness. So step seven, you need to update any third party tools or email um, third party tools that you're using in any email. So things like email marketing, these days we all use a, a whole range of different services and software around our main central website. So I'm talking about things like email marketing, marketing automation, if you're using Infusionsoft or whatever, or, or um, uh, one of those kind of tools. Um, customer relationship management tools, maybe a billing system if you're is issuing invoices. At the moment you might be sending people links with HTTP on them. Uh, or even client login links. You just need to update them now to be HTTPS. Finally, things like live chat. If you use live chat and you've got canned responses in there, you may be uh, pushing pages um, to your customers on a daily basis where there's useful information. Now, of course, the, the 301 redirect is gonna take care of that. If they do go to an HTTP page, they'll be taken through to the new HTTPS. But this is just about best practice and making sure that you're um, um, you're covering yourself on that side of things. Then step eight, update any landing pages and paid search links. So maybe you're using pay-per-click. If you are, double check your ads, make sure they're going through to HTTPS pages, double check any landing pages. If you're using um, a landing page generator tool like um, uh, Unbounce or Instapage, make sure that you're updating your custom URL there to, to be HTTPS in future. As I say, again, the 301 redirect will take care of that, but this is just for completeness. Uh, this is just a belt and braces approach. And then finally, we need to make sure that we're updating your Google products. So things like Google Search Console, which used to be Google Webmaster Tools, you need to resubmit the HTTPS version. And likewise with Google Analytics, and making sure that you're picking up your new analytics, um, change the default URL to HTTPS. Okay, so there we are. Let's have a quick wrap up. First point is HTTPS is a secure way of browsing, the secure way of setting up your website. It isn't just for payment these days, especially since HTTPS is a Google ranking factor. More and more people are switching um, to, for, for, for that side of things, for the benefits of their, of their ranking, as well as security. There are several types of SSL certificates. They all offer the same level of security. However, they do have slightly different um, options in terms of presenting yourself. If you want the green bar, you need to go for the more expensive extended validation. I'd say overall, if you're not, if you're not technically comfortable, then do get a develop, developer to help you and only hire the A graders once you've tested them, okay? Once you've installed your SSL certificate, go through the checklist, you need to run a backup, update your internal links, external links, things that are under your control like your social media accounts, um, set up a 301 redirect, update your HT access file, update the, um, if you're using a, a content delivery network, a CDN, do update the uh, that, that SSL there, update any third party tools that you're using like content markets, like sorry, um, email marketing, uh, and also any pay-per-click um, ads that you've got, any landing pages, if you're using any landing page tools as well. And finally, update your Google tools, things like go, uh, Google Search Console and Google Analytics. And there we are, that's it, okay? Um, just finally, if you do need any help with, uh, with your online marketing or anything like that, um, just head over to Maxima Local. We've actually got a free book that we can offer you there as well. It's an instant download. It's called the Website Survival Kit and it gives you a step-by-step, -step, clear and concise plan for you to create a powerful long-term plan for your business. And I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, we'd welcome any comments, any questions. Don't be shy, put them below. We do read them, we appreciate them and we will respond to them. Okay, thank you very much for your time and um, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.